and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is your Reverend, Faith and Current Affairs. Welcome back, everyone, to Irreverent Faith and Current Affairs. Jamie Franklin and Thomas Pelham today. Tom, you've just been in a, some kind of Genesis reading group. You were <laughs> telling me so you were delirious. Delirious? I don't know about that. I just, I just spent a lot of time in front of Zoom. Uh, we've got a. Um, for our, our bishop has decided this this year is the year of the Old Testament, uh, wow. and as part of that, um, a number of things happening. But one What's of them next is year? the next year, the New Testament. Oh, so you're missing out the year of the Apocrypha. There is uh, no, there is no apocrypha, apocrypha in my Bible. Not, it, <laughs> it just doesn't exist. Yeah. No what apocrypha. is this apocrypha nonsense? Uh, the uh... Goodness, gracious me, apologies uh, to uh, to all our listeners. Um, I understand what Tom is saying. Go on, Tom. <laughs> the uh, what was I saying? Yeah, he's he's very, we're very keen on the new the Old Testament this year in Chichester, and so uh, Bishop asked me and someone else uh, to run a. Uh, what do you call it? a reading group on Genesis? So we've got to Genesis three. We haven't got had that, we haven't had that many of them, but we're not that far into the year either. Um, so it was, just, it was good. It was how good. many was of these just, reading groups are you doing? Uh, about twenty over the year. Well, but you're doing one. You're doing more on Genesis, right? You're covering the whole thing. No, uh, Genesis and Exodus. Genesis and Exodus. But you've yeah. only done three chapters of Genesis. So how long is it going to take? I think, I think we're going to speed up. Well, the, the, the first we're going to have to, Tom. We did, we did one and two last week, and then three this week. Next oh week we're goodness. doing K today. Uh, next, uh, not last week, last week, uh, last a fortnight ago. After Lent, we resume and we do K and Abel. You're never going to get Genesis and Exodus finished at this rate. We've got a plan and everything. Um, oh wow, amazing, amazing! You have to skip bits out. We, there I are bit, there are some random bits in Genesis, aren't there? You think, oh, what's all this about? I think we're <laughs> keeping it to the stuff that's you know really quite. Um, Important, yeah. Well, interesting to talk about. Yeah, important. Um, what about the Nephilim, Tom? Are you going to talk about them? I hope so. The uh, they're the yeah, race, they're of, the, race, the of, race of um, race of fallen angels, aren't they? Or giants? No, giants. No, they're giants. They're giants who come about as a because result angels of, breed with uh, uh, humans. That's right. Yeah, fallen angels. I think they are. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Hey, Tom, did you have a good time at our live event with uh, Rod? Dreyf? I had a fantastic time. It was knackering, but I had a fantastic time. Rod was such a uh, wonderful person to have and uh, the crowd were fantastic and all in all i thought it was good it was really yeah. good very positive yeah. very positive yeah. big shout out to everyone who's there and to the man himself Rodre, and to daniel who's not very well uh he was he wasn't very well when we were there was he i mean he he he, he didn't really let it show but he he was clearly had a sore throat and was, um, a bit of a cough but he did he did val- valiantly he and, did uh um, <laughs> yeah it got worse and worse he's talked quite a lot in the morning and then very little in the evening but uh he yeah. was still talking, wasn't he? He was still going for it. Okay. He was still, he was he was still proclaiming the truth. He was. Uh, no, it was great. I, I really enjoyed meeting uh, Rod. Looking forward to his new book now. Uh, it sounds brilliant, uh, his new book. It's all about miracles and stuff like that. So very sort of charismatic stuff. Uh, he shared a bit with us about that, didn't he? Which is which was really cool, actually. Yep, yep, it was. So uh, sorry to those who couldn't make it. And lots of people said, well, why don't you record it? But the fact is, is that firstly, it's, it costs loads of money and it's really a lot of hassle to record stuff live. And secondly, we just prefer not to because we can say all the things that we want to say on this podcast, but which might get, you know, be a little bit stuff we don't necessarily want recorded and put on the internet, if you yep. take my meaning. Not because there's nothing wrong with it, but just some things, you know, you've got to keep slightly more private, don't you? So Yeah, I, th- I think it's just, a, it just, it just provides a good space to be able to say, uh, you know, just to be able to talk openly yeah. like like you would in a pub you wouldn't want to be recorded all the time in a pub would you no oh, no well. definitely not i mean i don't go to the pub very much nowadays tom to be honest with you um you not? Like, I've, got, I've got four small children on a diet like to be di- what are you doing on a diet you did this on, always on, a diet. on saturday where you had like a protein bar for lunch and then complained you were hungry at five o'clock like, I, have didn't a complain. I wasn't complaining you were you were complaining to everyone who listened to you i'm hungry yeah, you were trying like... to stop me you were trying to stop me from having dinner I was just saying that five o'clock is too early to have dinner, Jamie. It's not. It's not. Um, <laughs> it's just not too early to have dinner. I have dinner at like five o'clock every day, if not earlier. I'm anyway. starving by the end of the day. Right. Anyway, that's enough of that. Right. Uh, any other notices of banter? No, except for I'm wearing our irreverent uh, cap today for people who can see the video. Uh, just to remind people that our merchandise is available. Uh, we've got two cool long sleeve T-shirts, this cap, and of course the irreverent mug, which we've had to order more of because it's so popular. Uh, these caps are almost all gone, by the way. So if you want one, Better order it now at irreverentpod. 
com. So I thought I'd just do a little plug every now and again for the merchandise, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before good. we get before we get to scripture, Tom, uh, let's do a bit of FAF, shall we? Well, I can't actually remember the the uh, what it stands for. Fatigued, amused, and freaked out. Have you have you got anything this week? You you, you uh, thought it was some classic. That um that thing last week, I still got <laughs> the uh, the letter from um, Canterbury Cathedral. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah, no, I, I haven't really so much this week. Uh, well, I, I've, I've obviously um, tired <laughs> yeah. after the uh, after the Reverend Live, but that's not quite what this is for, is it? Yeah, um, no, not really. I tell uh, you what, I was really amused by uh, earlier, and this is to give a sort of—I wouldn't call them a rival podcast, but a similar kind of podcast. Um, the Daily Skeptic podcast with um, Toby Young and, and Nick Dixon. Are we going to get Nick Dixon on? Yeah, I'd like him to come on. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, we, he was coming on before, but then it was a bit of balls up on my part. Uh, so I'd like him to come on, but he's very, very busy now. Uh, but I was listening to the weekly episode earlier, and he does. He does. Um, they're doing this kind of agony aunt column where he pretends to be Jordan Peterson, and yeah. honestly, I haven't laughed as much. Uh, in ages as that, that really really made me laugh and you know it's not that easy to make me laugh tom I, you know i've got a fairly high bar uh but that was he does he does a splendid inter um impression of uh jordan peterson uh something that has fatigued and simultaneously well and no, it hasn't freaked me out it's but just you, fatigued me go on go on carry what's on. freaked me out is yeah, go on. madonna's face all right what's going on with madonna's face well she, she <laughs> i'm looking at him now yeah i mean look it up it is uh it is odd it is odd she's what's had happened? She almost enormous oh amount goodness. of yeah i know oh my uh, goodness yeah yeah you've seen it uh yeah so. oh that is terrible isn't it that is really dreadful so she's had loads of um, plastic surgery hasn't she it looks like it doesn't it um oh, so she, all looks, in all... she looks inhuman doesn't she oh it's terrible it's a bit weird isn't it it's bit... well it's, it's sad isn't it and and it's the thing a... is you know we she, need she to... had a sort of she had a, she had a beauty that didn't need to have that done to her you know yeah, women, just... did, I mean, all, all people, not just women, but, you know, all people should should uh, age uh, gracefully. And um, I think the thing is, is we need to we, um, we need to look at what the underlying motivation is, don't we, for for, you know, for why people do these things to themselves, because it clearly doesn't it clearly doesn't work. It never it never works. People never look better after plastic surgery, but they do it anyway, because they can't. There must be a sense in which their looks are you know so important to them they can't they can't bear the idea of getting older and i think that's really really sad isn't it yeah yeah so i think it's i think it's just, it's a real shame uh well I th- it's a real shame that she feels she has to do that for some reason but she just looks odd it looks like it's a puffed up face all the botox and these lips that are huge and oh, yeah bad, it's just it? it's, it's not it's not a nice look anyway mm-hmm. yep i mean it's it's part of our culture's denigration of age isn't it um proverbs 1631 Grey hair is a crown of glory. It is gained by living a godly life. Well, I'm going grey. I am as well, actually. Yeah, not so. as quickly as me, Jamie. No. I'm going going reasonably quickly, and I'm also bald as well. Although the Bible doesn't say the same thing about uh, going bald, so no, it doesn't. Um, that's one of the advantages of wearing a hat, by the way. Hide your baldness. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure lots of bald people know that. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, let's move on. That is sad. So prayers for Madonna. Um, that's very very sad. Um, I am fatigued by the lame Satanism of uh, Sam Smith and Kim Petras growing up. Uh, sorry, growing up, um, dressing up uh, Sam Smith, who, who is multiple people apparently. The 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 multiple. Um, the multiple. I don't even know how to describe uh, Sam Smith. Multiple people. They dressed up as would you say devils? They dressed up as devils because you can't have a a a, um, a plural pronoun which uh, which agrees with a singular noun, can you? So, what is it? Let's just call it. Let's just call him what he is, shall we? Which is a man. Um, Sam, Smith, Sam Smith. Sam Smith. Um, dressed up as is it the Baftas. No, no, it's the Grammys, not the Baftas. The Grammys. What's the difference? What's the Grammys? Grammys is an American music award thing but the thing about this down tom is i i sometimes you, you sort of see this stuff coming out on social media and you think like what why are people getting so you know he's like in a in a pvc devil suit he looks ridiculous there's no there's no point like giving and you know i realized by even saying this it's kind of contradicting but there's no point giving these people any attention they're just attention seeking morons and this this song that they were singing i've never heard it but i looked up the lyrics it's called unholy um look this is just what i'm saying okay these people are idiots. They probably actually are Satanists. If they're if they're not knowingly Satanists, they are they are clearly operating in the service of Satan. And just keep your children away from them because they are um, going to pollute them with their perverse understanding of 
he, of life. Um, Liz, the lyrics, Mummy don't know daddy's getting hot at the body shop doing something unholy. He like it, like it, yeah, ooh. He like it, like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. He like it, like it, yeah, uh. He like it, like it, yeah. And then Sam Smith. It's like T.S. Eliot, isn't it? <laughs> a lucky, lucky girl. She got married to a boy like you. She'd kick you out if she ever, ever knew about all the, presumably that is the S word, start out, you tell me that you do dirty, dirty boy, blah, blah, blah. It's about a man who has gay sex um, and his um, wife doesn't know about it. And, and perversely, it, it, it's it's sort of um, told from a child's perspective. Mummy don't know, daddy's getting hot at the body shop. So if you want your kids to be exposed to that kind of filth, uh, give them a smartphone, give them access to the internet and let them watch the Grammys. If you don't, then don't. I suggest uh, don't do any of that stuff and educate them about the evils of sexual transgression and Satanism. That's my take on that, Tom. Do you, do you have any take on that? <laughs> I, I think you're probably about right. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's the, the most irritating thing about it is how, um, how poor it is. Like, you know, how 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 bad yeah how yeah. bad it all is oh yeah anyway yeah. um yeah it's just it's just horrible isn't it's, it? it's, just, it's just why are we paying attention to this and this I is I, I do find it genuinely shocking i've heard people make the point that you know we've had sort of references to satan and stuff in pop music for 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 decades and why is suddenly you know it's it's just you know i don't i'm not interested in sam smith this is the second week in a row we've spoken about him and you know why are we doing it, Tom? I don't want to do it. Let's stop it. Um, no so I'm, fa- yeah. I'm fatigued That's by it. that. Next That's week, it. next week, not a single mention of Sam Smith and his multiple personalities and penchant for PVC devil suits. Um, also, Tom, I just thought it was worth flagging up this. This, this is really, in some ways, this is like a you know some people are going to say, oh, this is like a pernickety, but this is really important because um, the media manipulate our view of reality and chief among those uh, media outlets that do this is the bbc yeah. and i just i just want to give uh, an example of this this is why we shouldn't uncritically um consume um, news sites like the bbc's and others and just think that they're giving us you know some kind of objective take because they are not much better to listen to alternative media podcasts and um videos you know like like ours uh, anyway, so this is this is it, right? BBC News: Man charged after 11-year-old girl's disappearance in Galashiels. So I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce that name because I've never heard of it. Galashiels. It's in the Scottish borders. A 53-year-old man charged following the disappearance of an 11-year-old girl was, who was later found in the Scottish borders. Blah 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 blah. A bit about the girl, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's only on the fourth paragraph that it says Andrew Miller, and they're just in a little sort of subclause. Also known as Amy George was arrested on Tuesday. Police confirmed he was charged overnight. He is expected to appear at Elkirk Sheriff Court on Thursday in a report, blah, 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 blah. And then that's that's it. There's a, there's a bit more information there. But you read that and you think, hmm, that's interesting. What's that bit about this man being called Amy George? Well, it turns out that this man is actually um, uh, a transgender man. And uh, he has a Facebook account in which he refers to himself as Amy George and dresses up like a woman. And uh, there's a, I've got an article here about it on redux.info with lots and lots of information about it. But essentially, a transgender man kidnapped and an 11-year-old girl. And I can't find any more information about what actually happened there. But the point I'm making is that the BBC have massively, massively underemphasized that aspect of the story. It's interesting as well that they don't use, well, they use the pronoun he. I don't know whether that is uh, Andrew Miller's preferred pronoun. Well, I think well, it is. Andrew Miller is is a bloke. Yes, but sometimes bloke don't who bloke. dresses up as a woman. But but the thing is that the BBC normally would call Andrew Miller she. Yeah, uh, wouldn't wouldn't they? You yeah. know, it, it's just it's just like so. Why are they calling him him he? I don't know. Uh, probably because um, they the, well, presum- presumably the, the reason being is they don't want to associate trans- a transgender woman. I don't really is it trans? I don't really know. Um, uh, yeah, they they call themselves transgender women. I think yeah, yeah. So with with a uh, the crime of kidnapping a girl. Um, yeah. Whereas uh, apparently it's fine uh, if you rape people. 
Yeah. Uh, some tweets here from Amy George. Yep. Amy, this is Andrew Miller, the man who kidnapped this little girl. Amy, single woman, only interested in single women. Um, another one, I've been butchering for 50 she, years personally now. A lesbian, he's, a, then. he's a butcher. He's a butcher. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. 22 in Jedburgh, 28 in Marais. I come from a family of butchers. I've won many awards in butchery and in quizzing c- cooking skills. I am Amy G. Miller. That's interesting. So is Miller... That's his. That's a combination of his um, trans name and normal name. Who knows? Then, uh, it's, it's all. It's all then, one more. One more. One more. Silly Billy's in Westminster. Never mess with Scottish transgender issues. But that's coming from his non-transgender account. Apparently, he's got. Oh, that was on Facebook. Apparently, that's on his male Facebook account. So anyway, you, you see the point I'm making here, Tom. Yep. That this is just is the BBC and their agenda. The way they report the news, they twist everything because they're trying to make it suit their ideology, which is to promote, apart from other things, it's to promote transgenderism. Yeah. So we see you, BBC. We see you. You're not trustworthy. We're far more trustworthy than the BBC. We're only ever so slightly biased, whereas they are appallingly biased. Yeah. I'd say we're about six out of ten for biased. We're pretty BBC. biased. Yeah, Well, we're, we're, but we don't claim to be impartial do we they do that's the problem that's the massive problem anyway to do yep. a bit of scripture tom let's do some scripture now we've definitely prepared this haven't we we're, we're in philippines aren't we philippines oh don't know me philippines yeah, <laughs> it's it's Philippine. philippines though it's <laughs> like the country it sounds it's the country like philippines. uh i'm tired uh the philippines paul's letter to the yeah uh philippians philippines <laughs> all right uh okay do you want to read it or shall i go ahead okay so philippians 1 19 to 26 oh, we should do the lord's prayer first shouldn't we oh i messed up the live then i've got to do the doxology at the end of the it's a doxology uh, it's not biblical it is it's in one of the gospels it's not in one of the gospels it's it's it's, it's gloss no nah, it's not it's a gloss anyway, Matthew. Anyway. Uh, we'll do the lord's prayer with the doxology please mm-hmm. thank you let all us right. pray all right our father who art in heaven yeah. hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name, name. Thy kingdom come. There's a lag. You can't do it at the same time as me. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All this stuff about glosses, Tom. It's it's a liturgical gloss. It really isn't in the early manuscripts. That's why most, most, honestly, most critical versions now do not have it how oh, critical versions uh, honestly even the niv it's in it's in brackets niv oh i bet it's in brackets in the rsv N- as well. niv no it's not right we're gonna i don't want to hear any more of this critical stuff honestly right yes and i shall re- this is apostle paul um writing from prison if you want context listen to previous episodes where we've given context when we've prepared um as we have now Yes, and I shall rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I shall not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honoured in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If it is to be life in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, yet which shall I choose, I cannot tell, I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. There we are. It's quite a wonderful passage, isn't it? Famous, mm. famous uh, verse there, Philippians one twenty one. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So Paul is uh, facing death in this passage. Go on, Tom, are you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say it's not—it's not to be taken as occasionally sort of bad takes on it are. You know, that the, 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 the Christians should sort of uh, fritter away their life or, or, or hope to die in, in quite the same way. You know, um, it's not a sort of uh, license for for foolishness or anything like that. It's 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 a man confronted with 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 death at the hands of a, of, a, of, of the Roman state. Um, mm, it's yep. a bit different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think uh, verse 20 is a great is a great uh, aspiration, isn't it, for um, to be inspired by, you know, I shall not 
my hope is that I shall not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honoured in my body, whether by life or by death. So whether we face challenges in this life or whether we face persecution, uh, martyrdom and, and death, we we should hope to face those things with courage and to honour Christ through them as well. So um, it reminds me actually what um, Rodrea told quite a lot of stories, didn't he, at the weekend, particularly about um, martyrs under you know Soviet communism and Eastern Bloc communism and how these, and that's um, detailed in his book, Live Not By Lies, and how these priests and other believers uh, faithfully and courageously. Um, it was really moving, wasn't it? It's mm. just uh, incredibly moving sort of, sort yeah. of stories that we, we shared. Um, absolutely yeah absolutely so we can be inspired by them hopefully we won't have to suffer martyrdom for our faith but we do have to die to ourselves don't we tom there we do and, and you know um there's a a tradition of sort of um you know foxes martyrs and that sort of stuff of, of, of sort of teaching all of these uh heroes of the faith uh to our children and you know uh, we, we've sort of lost that tradition and i think it's quite um sad that we've lost that tradition mm, yes Yes, indeed. Well, we can relearn it by reading books like Live Not By Lies to Our Children, can't we? Yep. Obviously, at the appropriate age. I mean, it is quite um, it is quite intense. Um, yes. Yeah, so just one other thing, Tom. Uh, interesting thing here, isn't it? For To me, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Um, my desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better than living. And then he goes on to say, you know, that he doesn't think that's going to happen because he knows that remaining with the Christians who he's responsible for is more important than him going to be with Christ. It's just interesting, isn't it? That he says um, that to depart and be with Christ is far better. It's just interesting to think, you know, um, not that I want to get too sort of, um, you know, denominationally specific here, but it does seem to be the case that Paul expects to be in the presence of Christ as soon as he dies. Um, and that, uh, that that will be a sort of um, a, a beatitude. It will be a blessed state for him um yeah I, uh, yes um do you know what i mean well i thought that that it was fairly I don't, I don't know quite what um what controversy we're getting into like that there's a i think revelation's clear that there's a there's a heaven which is immediate and then a and then a, a recreation <clears throat> of heaven and earth which is in the future at the eschaton well it would mitigate against uh two things i think um a purgatorial state i mean you could argue that because i suppose the roman catholic argue, answer to this would be that because uh paul is a saint that he he knows that you know he's guaranteed to go to heaven so i guess that would be the answer to that but it also mitigates against soul kind of the view that when you die your soul goes to sleep and is awaiting the resurrection because paul expects his soul or his spirit whatever you want to say to be with yeah him while, think, while it, his physical body is dead mind you that the um the there are different i mean even in paul there are different sort of uh glosses on that aren't there um so I'm thinking oh, what's, of uh, what's this supposed to mean? another another no not, another not, references not to glosses no okay different in a different sense you know yeah, different different we'll, ways we'll of looking at it so so there's uh, um, I mustn't be dismissive of you Tom my mum said I was too dismissive and I apologise <laughs> apologise for uh, dismissiveness there's in Thessalonians isn't there where we'll be snatched uh, away those who are asleep and those who are awake uh, and, and one Corinthians fifteen as well. Well, that's um, in one Corinthians four and one Corinthians fifteen. He's talking about the resurrection of the dead. The point I'm making here is that he's not talking about the resurrection of the dead here. He's no, talking he's talking about, about some sort of happened. intermediate state. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is this is what um, you know. Uh, I remember first reading about this in uh, Tom Wright's uh, Surprised by Hope is that um, that that view that you know when you die your body just dies and your your soul goes to heaven and then that's it. That's a kind of that's more like a kind of platonic view of the soul escaping the body and just yeah. going to be with God forever. And and this, you know, passages like this um do sort of say that, but what's not said is anything about the resurrection of the dead. So you've got sort of two stages. You've got the stage at which you die and you go to be with Christ in heaven. Uh, but then there's also the resurrection of the dead, which is a second stage, which is the kind of the the completion of the process, if you like, it's not a very yeah. way of saying it. And, but... the, and 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 not just heaven will be empty, but but Hades as well, mm -hmm. which is yeah. sort of God's waiting room, I guess. Yeah, sort of holding place. Yeah, um, and, uh, for for potentially for those who are not in Christ, um, and then all will be submitted to judgment. Yeah, or, but, or also people who maybe um, lived before Christ as well. But that's a whole other that's a whole other can of worms. Well, Tom. Yeah, we're getting into Peter, then, aren't we? And uh, who's who's Christ preaching to? Um, yeah. Uh, the I, I think 
the, all of this though it does need to be sort of moderated through the you know through through we're not quite going to understand how time is going to work in that so 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 it's hard to say you know how yeah what what, what does time look like to god but it doesn't look like anything like we we experience time so presumably if you're with god you're not experiencing time in the same way either although presumably again in the in the new creation there will be time again so. yeah it's an interesting question isn't it i don't i haven't really thought about it too much but yeah anyway uh, yeah. we should probably get back to the news but yeah sorry no, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful it's beautiful uh uh, passage and uh, um, and, and it sort of go, goes right the way back through the years, doesn't it? To to when we started and sort of uh, you know the whole COVID fear of death mm. and uh, and and you know Paul here models a a Christian view of death, doesn't it? In which uh, he's not terrified of death. In fact, he, he's welcoming of death because it's uh, it, it will be when he's with Christ. So. Um, Mm. You know, it's kind of a very countercultural thing now. Uh, we're supposed to be the the thing, you know. You, 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 I saw on the news actually a couple of weeks ago this sort of ch- Silicon Valley billionaire who's trying to cheat death by doing a sort of awful sort of uh, series of things. A bit like you, Jamie, like dieting and exercising and you know all that sort of awful stuff. And uh, <laughs> and uh, some kind of crazy strategy for for cheating death, is it? And, well, no, he, he, you know, he has he has you know. You know, blood filtration and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all that sort of stuff. I bet you would. I bet you would. And uh, you know, in the hope to you know eke a few years out in this life, whereas actually, really, <laughs> yeah, I'm not into that. Just don't bet you are. I bet don't you associate. Be. Don't associate me with listeners and viewers. Don't associate me with that behaviour. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, and he's vegan and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm def- that's not me. Uh, no, I know that's not you. Um, uh, anyway, it's, it's apparently it's, it's, we said this. It's vegan uh, day. Um, and synod, yeah, general synod. synod, synod yeah. Uh, so yeah. Marcus Walker, who you know we've had, uh, you know, ups and downs with on this podcast, but uh, but we we thoroughly support his consumption of a large beef burger. In <laughs> yeah, it's a good tweet. It's vegan day at synod, so I've had to seek refuge in edible food beyond the walls. And he's got a picture of it. It does look generally looks like a delicious uh, beef burger with melted cheese on the top and chips. Um, that is. It's good. That's super. That's super. That's, 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 making my, that's making my mouth water. That's I've, what, actually, that's I've, what... I've been keeping my calories quite low today because I'm having a big steak later. So um, that kind of thing is, is making me uh, making me feel hungry. Um, but anyway, uh, Tom, yeah. what were you? Sorry, were you finished with your point there? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was good. It's a good point. Um, shall we talk? Since we um, since we're talking about this kind of thing already, synod and all the madness. Oh. Um, somebody, uh, we're doing a, a question of rev later, but on the on the question of rev. Um, telegram threads somebody has written jesus told us when we pray to say our father who art in heaven why do some church of england bishops think they know better than jesus what's he talking about tom oh but do I mean, bishops what... think they know better than jesus that doesn't sound right well yes they do actually the bishop of london seems to have decided that we can know nothing at all. So, well no it's, it's, it's the uh about what jesus wants for us um okay. it appears right. to be the, the the she she gave a, a talk at synod um and um we'll be, we, um what did she just, say, just say maybe a bit more specific here <laughs> <laughs> i'm just getting it up now it's uh, martin davy uh who, who um uh is an anglican theologian uh wrote a sort of reflection but she says that uh oh we uh, see the um anglican reflection reflection of reflections of an anglican theologian yeah uh was it, so was it good Anglican reflections, reflections of an refle- Anglican theologian. Yeah, yeah, but isn't it called Anglican reflections, reflections of an Anglican theologian, or something? No, I don't think so. It's just reflections. Oh, uh, there is a website like that which is called Anglican theology a reflection. Okay, all right. Maybe it's. Uh, not, maybe I'm, I'm no, you might be right. Uh, maybe sort of. Uh, there's sort of scope for some sort of wordplay there, isn't there? But he, he doesn't appear to have gone for it. Um, so here we go. The, you know, uh, our, she says, Bishop of London, our call is and always will be to seek the face of Christ. Yes, and each other, but above all, in searching the scriptures, examining the church's tradition and exercising our reason as we strive to make sense of how truth is to be lived out with grace in our 21st century context. So far, so good. Then she says, basically, we've done this and we failed. So it must just be God doesn't want it to know. Is that uh, what she said? <laughs> She says, the reality is that we have done all these things, even among ourselves as bishops, and our conclusions about the clear teaching of Scripture and the trajectory of the church's tradition diverge. We see God at work in each other's ministries and are forced to acknowledge that somehow, mysteriously, the people of God who seek God's face and who want to see the church flourish disagree. Due for some unthasable reason, she writes, God, it seems, has allowed us to continue to disagree. 
disappointingly refusing to engineer a Damascus Road experience from one side or the other, either in the Church of England or across the Anglican Communion. Uh, so she um, she thinks that God is no longer, for some reason, speaking uh, through his scripture. Imagine, the if, imagine, if, imagine if St. Athanasius had said that in the yeah, century. Oh, we've tried to read the scriptures, but we disagree about the nature of the Trinity. Yeah. Why has God Why has God allowed this to happen? You know, yeah. I can hear all the Roman Catholics laughing at us, Tom. I really I can. Know, I know, they're, I know. they're rubbing their hands in glee saying, I told you so. I told you so. I told you this would happen. So yeah. thanks, thanks very much. Except I'm not sure the Roman Catholics have it easy. I mean, Rod, Rod kept saying, "All right, uh, okay, yeah. We, yeah, we don't need to, we don't need to get into it." I'm just saying, you know, no, I know, I know. I'm just saying it's fair enough, isn't it? It's it's good, it's good for the, it's good for the game. Should say that that's I'm, I'm not, not... I agree with it, but uh, no, I'm just saying I, I think it's it would be an apt thing for a Roman Catholic to say at this point. So, but, so basically, it's the denial by the Bishop of London that the, the Scripture reveals everything necessary for salvation, isn't it? Effectively, it's a denial that that the scripture doesn't give us everything we need to live a life wor- that, that God uh, worthy of God. Um, um, I just think so, I just think so, it's a very I just think it's a very strange kind of um, it's it's not it's not a particularly Anglican way of approaching the question, is it? On on any on it's any not a particularly level. Christian way, of because yeah, well, it. yeah, that's another way of saying it. I mean, we don't just say, oh, you know, everyone's private interpretation is equally valid. We weigh it against the tradition of the church. Um, and and the actual scriptures themselves and we say well you know this is divergent this is diver this diverges from what the scriptures say i don't understand you know tom it's just you know this whole thing is just it's got nothing to do with scripture like you know people should just be lots of people are honest and they say you know uh we're just you know you they just say look we've moved beyond scripture and things like that but let's be let's be clear about what we're talking about so when i when i um asked that question tom i was talking about the not the gay marriage thing no but the but the, uh, the, 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 the non-gendered, non-gendered God. Who in heaven so it's the same we, problem you know the, the church leader thinks that it can re reassess this and find some sort of uh agreement amongst disagreements and once again you know we'll end up with a situation where some other bishop stands up and says you know the church leader has thought long and hard about about you know whether god her, can be addressed by our father and we've yeah, searched the scriptures yeah. we, should, we, should, the Tom, we should we should just tell people what we're talking about okay oh, so okay. this is the story it's in for example the daily mail a priest could stop using pronouns he and him when referring to god in prayers and drop the phrase our fa- father from the lord's prayer and there's a long article about this in the daily mail i've got to say tom when i first saw this i wasn't that shocked because because I know, you know, the way things are is like basically people in the Church of England, although they shouldn't, they basically do whatever they want anyway, liturgically. So the idea that, you know, people are doing well, it. Well, we've been subjected to uh, we've the been subjected to a heavy dose of this. <laughs> what is it? Uh, the, the New Zealand Lord's Prayer, which is, yeah. how does it start? Um, uh, <laughs> let's look it up. Okay, look it up. <laughs> but basically, just to say, we, we had this kind of thing all the time yeah. at, uh, 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 theological college, didn't we? I mean, this just happened all the time. So it's yeah. you know, I remember you know they would call like uh, the Holy Trinity. Well, the Holy Trinity, they call them like you know, um, a creator, maker, and sustain, uh, sustainer. Yeah. So in order in order to avoid using the 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 so called gendered language of. So here we go. Here we go. This is what the, this is presumably yeah. this is the future of the Church of England. Here we are the, the the Lord's Prayer according to the alternative New Zealand Anglican Prayer Book. Here we go. You ready? You ready? Mm. eternal spirit earth maker pain bearer life giver source of all that is and all that should be father Shall and mother of us all loving god in whom is heaven okay what does that mean it doesn't mean anything it's what, well, what it is not whom is heaven though i mean like who, who art in heaven is implying well, yeah. god is in god is in heaven not not that heaven is in god yeah, it's an odd, it's an odd one. The problem is that actually what the Lord's Prayer is is a, is a translation of, of what Jesus said, and that isn't a translation of the Greek. It's just not in any way comparable. Um, there's there's all sorts of sort of nonsense in it. Um, pain bearer. That's, pain that's, bearer. That's, that's basically heretical, isn't it? Because it's implying that God the Father and the Holy Spirit pain uh, bear our pain. That's not true. Yeah, that's not true. I mean, um, also that God is so. Uh, well, look, Tom. Let's uh, let's watch this clip, shall we? Because I oh, think this will this will without doubt bring clarity. And then I think we should give a theological take on this. So basically, the story is that bishops are now after they've after they've solved the problem of gay marriage, which they're doing as we speak uh, at General Synod. They're then going to talk about um, making provision in liturgy for using. Um, you know gender neutral language when it comes to god um it's good to see that they're using their time uh wisely 
obviously they're all very busy and they've got lots of important things to be doing. Uh, but they are, you know, Tom, it's, it's important, isn't it, that they discuss these issues because uh, that's what that's what's going to reach the culture, isn't it, Tom? That's what's going to reach people. Everyone cares about uh, this. Yeah. Everyone cares about this. This is just what we need. So let's listen to developing story on uh, Good Morning Britain. It's, uh, you know, who it is, Tom? Who is it's, it? Uh, it's Charlie Bell. Uh, uh, Charlie Bell, uh, who is a priest, uh, a gay priest in the Church of England. And it's, it's very noisy on Twitter, isn't he? I wrote a um, an article this week. Uh, Charlie Bell did not like it, Tom. He didn't, he did on. he? Uh, yeah. He said something like, "This is uh, of all the takes, this is the worst, or something, or the worst take so far." Or he said so it was in first things. I'll leave a, a link below if anyone wants to read it. Um, it's oh, it was about... quite good. Thank you. Uh, it's upset good. people because because you, you you basically you made the argument that we can't move from. Uh, the, the, you know, we're talking about some of the one common sort of theme, one trope that we hear over and over again is, you know, well, gay people were, were sort of made that way uh, and, uh, you know, they're genetically that way. And this means it's, uh, you know, OK, because it's part of them. And, and effect, effectively, this is quite Pelagian, actually. It's sort of, uh, I think, but anyway, the, it denies it denies the sort of uh, the fact that um, humanity is fundamentally fallen. Yeah, uh, and also yeah. it means you can't move from you can't move from genetics to ethics like that. And it's it's yeah. responding to something John Inge said, the Bishop yeah, of Worcester. Yeah. But it's a really lame thing he said because he said um, he said you know there's a scientific uh, a general scientific consensus that homosexuality is not a choice, and he's kind of using that as one of his principal arguments for justifying. Um, you know, yeah. gay, gay relationships, and all I'm saying is, you so know, what? regardless of what you think about the issue, that's not a justification for gay relationships. You could use that justification for absolutely anything. You know, you could say, well, I'm inclined to fits of anger, so therefore I'm justified in beating uh, my wife. Or I, you know, the the, um, the piece also makes the point, although this was my editor's point, to be fair. But you know, his point, which is in the piece, is that um, the neurological mechanism for um, paedophilic desire has been more plausibly located than that for homosexual desire so that would that would lead you to um to the blessing of paedophilic desire so you don't want to go down that road it's just not it's just not right anyway uh charlie bell he retweeted it and wrote this wins as the worst most ill-informed take so far um and uh, but that tweet itself has got 3266 views so hopefully lots of people have found it oh and guess what um, a certain person um, who who is a female priest, Tom, who we won't name, but you and I both know who she is. She's written, I don't even have to read a word of it to believe that. <laughs> so there we are. Well, That's there good. we go. She can... There we go. Um, somebody's written, in what ways this article is bad, as you say it is, but he hasn't replied. Anyway, let's listen to his take on this. I think this is about the whole thing. Like, is God a man? Should we have gay weddings, et cetera, et cetera. So are you ready, Tom? I'm ready. I just call out. Now we'll do this like twits on Twitter. We're not calling Charlie Bell a twit. We would never do that. Um, but it, we'll do it like that. So if you, you know, if you've got something to say, just shout out and I'll stop it. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Studio. Wait a minute. Bring us now in the studio. Here we go. Anglican priest, Charlie Bell, and uh, Graham Nichols, who is an evangelical pastor, joins us from Haywards Heath. Very. He's got um, a check shirt and a goatee, just so, just as set the stage not charlie bell charlie bell's in in anglican gear so just as just so you can imagine what the evangelical guy looks like so let's go very good morning to both of you good morning um is our father actually a woman <laughs> what an interesting question i mean i think for, for for millennia we've tried to find and um, words to speak about god mm. um and in a sense that's that's always been part of of the christian challenge it's the part of the challenge of any religion um I think we need to, I think the, the arguments over whether um, changing our father to be more gender neutral um, can, can very easily end up to be sort of, um, uh, you know, curtain twitching uh, moral panic. Uh, in a sense, we're just talking about trying to find ways of talking about God as we begin to develop our language, as we understand more and more about human beings in the, in the, in the modern world. Mm. So is, is okay, God our that. father? Will... So that. Do, is he implying that there's something that he knows that Jesus didn't? i.e. the incarnate son of God. Because that's presumably what he's thinking about. The, the Jesus, through his use of language, you know, didn't know what he was saying. Or at least the, the word father, or maybe maybe he's implying the word we're learning, father. Has, we're learning more, Tom. So the word, word father more. is um, 
is obviously changed an awful lot in the last two thousand years. The concept of fatherhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. As as we learn more, we we develop our language. So Jesus wasn't just didn't know as much as we do. Yeah. Didn't know as much as Charlie Bell, and so you know, it's only natural. There's quite a lot of flim flam in this, though, isn't it? I mean, he's yeah. like, oh, people have been thinking about this for a long time. Um, yeah, we've been trying really hard, but it's only recently that we've developed ways of understanding human beings. Which, um, I mean, he doesn't mention. Well, let's hang on. Let's just listen let's to that again. Let's, let's, let's get to the end because it's quite a short clip. The arguments over whether um, changing our father to be more gender neutral um, can can very easily end up to be sort of um, uh, you know curtain twitching uh, moral panic. Uh, just just on that, um, I don't feel a moral panic over this. I just yeah. you know I just think it's quite interesting. Um, obviously, it's wrong, but the reason I'm not panicked is because it's so obviously wrong that anyone who embraces it will inevitably lead their own particular part of the church into complete ruin and irrelevance so it's not a a panic for me in a sense we're just talking about trying to find ways of talking about god as we begin to develop our language as we understand more and more about human beings in the in the in the modern world Mm. so is yeah, I mean, that's most of what he just said is just nonsense, isn't it? I mean, it's literally tautological. We're, we're trying to find ways of talking about God as we develop our language. That doesn't mean anything. That's literally meaningless. And then saying, um, you know, as we learn more about human beings, well, it's a conversation about God, not about human beings. So what is he talking about? I guess there's a question of whether, you know, I mean, obviously the word father in Greek uh, um, <laughs> Uh, is translated as father into English. The, not the same word is not the word that Christ used. He probably used the Aramaic word, which was um, Abba. Um, I guess the question is whether Abba and father in English share um, not just the core meaning of father, but whether they share the sort of peripheral meanings as well. Um, whether they whether they're still a good. Um, Okay, I mean, there is a question. There's, 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 a a complete, whole... there's a completely different question to the one they're interested in, though. But no, but, but is it? Is it? I mean, presumably he's he's claiming that the, the the concept of father in English is no longer suitable to translate Abba, so he's looking for some other word. Mm. I think so. I don't I mean, think he's presumably... arguing that. I think he's arguing. Well, I don't think he's arguing anything. There's no content to his. Well, there's argument. currently no, no argument. No but what, the, the, what's what's behind it is um is that they want to stop referring to God as a man because. It refers. It sort of implies some kind of patriarchal order to create. But I mean, but I mean, so that that would be within the within the word Abba and within the word Father. So that's that's a, that's a reasonable translation, and so therefore we could should keep using it unless they're prepared to say that Christ was simply wrong. Uh, so, so the only the only way they could argue it would be if if uh, uh, the concept of Father now in this culture is is radically different to the concept that Jesus was using. Yeah, which is, yeah, which is it not. Is. So, you know, should we keep listening? Yeah, let's just finish this. So that that what he's just said. So basically, he's got to. We got to fifty five seconds into a clip of a, a minute and six seconds, and he said nothing about the question so far. So let's hope he. Um, apart from people who've been thinking about this for millennia, uh, and I do have a comment on that in a minute. As we begin to develop our language, as we understand more and more about human beings in the in the in the modern world, that's a nonsense phrase. Mm. So is is God our Father? Will Jesus calls God our Father? Um, yes. Is God a man? Absolutely not. And the entire <laughs> history of Christian theology and indeed Jewish theology before it would support that position. Oh, what a load of nonsense he's talking! Well, honestly, well, but God isn't a man. God's the Spirit, so there's no. Yeah, but no uh, you know, you know what he's doing. You know what he's doing, Tom. He's moving. He's doing this classic thing, which they all do, which is they move from they move from Jesus calling God Father to God not being a man. And that's just that's just completely disingenuous. So we know God's not a man in the sense that he's not a physical man. But it's a question of what the word father implies, isn't it? Which is which is maleness, because fathers are male. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, nobody's saying and this is where I mean, I, I don't even know whether Charlie Bell knows this. I mean, I assume he doesn't because he probably would have tried to try to say something about it. But, um, you know, the, the tradition of um um, theological reflection upon language, which is to do with God, says that our language, I mean, we're in the most part, in the, in the West, I suppose, I don't know as much about the East, but in the most part, it would say that our language about God is analogical. So it bears, uh, when we say that God is a father, that must bear some resemblance, whatever that means, must bear some resemblance to what we mean by the word father. But um, at the same time, there is a there is a gulf of meaning. There's a there's a there's an enormous gulf of meaning uh, difference between what we mean when we say a word like father and what God actually is. But that does not mean that 
the word is meaningless. So the word is neither equivocal, meaning completely different when referring to God and referring to things on earth like human fa fathers, nor is it univocal, meaning exactly the same thing, but it's analogical, meaning that in part it corresponds and in part it doesn't. So the upshot of that is when we use a phrase like God is a father, that statement is true. And fathers are male so it must imply in some sense that god is male because fathers are male now again we're using analogical language so um so that only corresponds partially to what we mean when we say the word male but it still does and 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 then the other thing to say about this as well is that um the statement god is not a father or god is not male are both both false statements they are they are wrong they are wrong they're false um, now, nobody's saying that the statement God is not a man is false, but it's quite misleading in this context to move from um, what was the, what was the first thing said? Uh, acknowledging that Jesus called God Father to saying God is not a, God is not a man. You know, Jesus called fa God Father, but is God a man? Absolutely not. And that's all there is to say. It's just it's just misleading. Do you, do you yeah. see what I'm saying? I do. Um, C.S. Lewis said something about this, didn't he? He um, he, he wrote um, an article um, that essentially that that we are all compared to God feminine. Right. Because we're, because we're of course the bride of Christ. Um, there's something, there's something, so, so that if you separated sort of um, the concept of maleness and femaleness, femaleness from the, from the biological sex that, that, that express them in part in humanity, there are truths that are bigger than that, that are, that are, that are beyond that mm. um, to, to some degree, um, you know, we're all feminine in comparison to, to the, to the masculinity of God. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and you've got obviously the the scriptural metaphor of the church as the bride of Christ, yeah, exactly, as well, yeah. which, would, which would back that up. But all I'm saying is, you know, him saying, "Oh, you know, the scripture and the tradition and thousands of years of theological reflection would basically just say what he's just said." It's just nonsense. That's all I'm saying is like he's trying to make it sound like he he's he's sort of digging into the resources of Christian tradition, but actually he's just talking a load of flim flam, and then ending up with a conclusion that they want him to end up with, which is that God is gender neutral yeah well, um just to go on uh just to go back to the article we were talking about um ian paul's been commenting a lot on this stuff hasn't he um he writes the fact that god is called father can't be substituted by mother without changing meaning nor can it be gender neutralized to parent without loss of meaning fathers and mothers are not interchangeable but relate to their offspring in different ways that's quite a good one isn't it interestingly actually again this is kind of theological speculation but it is interesting to think about creation from this respect, isn't it? Because again, we're using um, we're using analogical language here, um, but um, or in this case, it might even be metaphorical language. But um, if you think about creation, if you think about God as a as a male image, um, and and you think about creation, um, if you think that God is a male and he creates then creation and God are entirely different, separate things, right? Because yep. males don't, um, they're not connected to the things that they, they're not connected to the children that they create, if you want to put it that way. Um, but if God is a is a mother or if God is a woman and, and she creates, then creation would come out of the womb of God, which is a far more sort of, um, it's it sort of lends itself probably to a, a sort of more, sort of panentheistic view yeah and it's quite common um isn't it and the problem with panentheism is that you end up with a god who is um you know changeable mm. uh, uh well, and, who... and you end up with a god who's you end up create creation is part of god isn't it you know and all yeah. things are god yeah mm -hmm. all things are god so, so so we've got some different words here you've got sort of um panentheism uh is a sort of it's a sort of uh um it's a type of pantheism, isn't it? So it's pantheism, which is, means all is God, and panentheism, which means sort of uh, all is in God, or you know. Um, yeah, it's like so it's like if all things are like a big circle. Yeah. Then God would be part of that circle, and everything else would also would be uh, would be the other part. Yeah, so I mean, God, God is still a thing by himself, but everything else is also a part of God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a big thing that a lot of feminist critics of. Of the Bible work with, don't they? And uh, they they, uh, um, they they don't want an unbridgeable gap between God and the world. They want because uh, that that gap sort of um, 
san- this is Rowan Williams writing actually, uh, uh, sanctions or grounds all sorts of other dualisms, not only spirit and body, but man and woman, humanity and nature. Um, and Rowan Williams wants to say that's, that, that, that there is a gap because it's only through that gap that we can understand God. It's only in, in the difference between the created and the uncreated orders that we can, that we can find God. Um, so uh, yeah, um, it, it's, yeah, it's so, just so to be Rowan, Rowan is on the right side of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. For what, for this yeah one. Just, no, just, to, cool. just to be clear. It's on its very good book on Augustine. Have you read it? Have you, have you come across I've read it? bits of it. I haven't read, haven't read the whole thing. It's, it's good. To, anyway, uh, the, um, uh the, the the sort of feminist readings of the bible lead to all sorts of awful heresies so it should be avoided yep yep yeah well it's important to it's important to remember isn't it that, that god and the creation are entirely separate but a lot of this stuff tom a lot of this kind of so-called theology it's all about just trying to um it's all about trying to well it's just about making it about us isn't it it's about making god like us it's about um it's about over uh humanizing god so that he can relate to us and he can sympathize with us and everything like that, which is, you know, that point I made earlier about the analogical language. I think that that's why it's such an important thing to remember that our language only partially and very dimly corresponds to, to who God is, but nevertheless also realizing that our language is still meaningful when it relates to God. Um, what, what they're trying to push towards is more of, um, well, I mean, it depends on what suits them because when it, when it comes to um, the stuff about God being a, being a father they say well it's equivocal i mean not that they use that language but like here for example um justin welby when he was talking about this where is it and i'll find it it's a good example of this um oh, where is it i've got this bit about where justin welby talks about this sorry i can't find it now oh, is this it here no hang on uh, can't find it sorry i'll find it in a minute and then i'll oh here we are uh justin welby uh all human language about god is inadequate and to some degree metaphorical god is not a father in exactly the same way as a human being is a father god is not male or female god is not definable so there i mean he hasn't actually he just uses the word metaphorical which is sort of a, you know it's it's a very low resolution phrase to use in this this context but when he says god is not a father in exactly the same way as a human being is a father. He's trying to say that that he's implying anyway that the language is equivocal, meaning that it means different things when applied to human beings and God. Yeah. Um, and then he moves from that very, very quickly to God is not male or female. When the actual, you know, the more accurate thing to say is God is a father and that, that his fatherhood in some way, they very dimly corresponds to what we mean by the word father when we apply it to human beings. And you cannot move from that understanding from an analogical understanding to the statement god is not male or female and then to say god is not definable which is what he says next is just nonsense because god is defined in scripture in in various different ways god is love god is light for example yep. um so you know are you going to say you know if you think about it it's so ridiculous because if you actually use those for examples you could say well god is not loving in exactly the same way as a human being is is loving therefore he doesn't love it's just it's 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 just yeah. not true. God, is not, God is not a light in the same way as lights are lights. Therefore, God is not a light. You know, it's just it well, yeah, and, and, um, yeah. I mean, you're quite right. Uh, the 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 other problem is that um, that actually we do believe that God has made Himself known in in specific ways, and particularly yeah. in, in specifically in, in in Christ. So so you, so so we can we can know God yeah. in Christ. Well, and also, Tom, how do they how do they get around the fact that Christ is a man? I mean, you know, Christ is the second person of the Trinity, so you can't just dismiss all maleness from God and say, "Well, God is not male." What about Christ? Christ was Christ was part of God. Christ is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, Christ and, is and, God. So that's yeah. an accurate thing to say, isn't it? Christ is God. He's part Christ of is, God. Yeah. He yeah, was yeah. a man. His humanity is still part of him because he took on flesh. But you, so, you could, I mean, if you, you get the impression that. The, you could give exactly the same sort of answer if, you, if if someone had said, you know, we should get rid of this Trinity business. You know, yeah. well, you know, God God has revealed Himself in many ways. You know, he's, 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 well, yeah, he's like God a Trinity, is three. He's not like a Trinity, he's three. God is three, but He's but, not three in the same way as we have three things, as we know the number three. Therefore, He's not three. You know, yeah. <laughs> therefore we can get rid of the Trinity. God is one, but He's not one in the same way as we mean one. So let's get rid of let's get rid of His oneness. It's yeah. it's the literally is the end of all it's the end of all theological talk. About but but this is this is where we're about. going, isn't it? I mean, basically, we, we're getting to the point where the bishops have all just gone uh, about yeah. anything, about anything. 
Well, they can't, they, you know, or we can't agree, so therefore it must just be a duality of opinions. As you know, God's just you know inscrutable, basically. No, no, but what yeah. I would say, what I would say about this, Tom, is there's a kind of pseudo theological language which is being used here, which to my to my mind is you know, and I'm not saying I know everything about theology, but I have read about this question uh, because I did do a little bit of work about on it a while ago. And for example, um, not that I'm endorsing this book, but um, in a book like um, David Bentley Hart's That All Shall Be Saved, the first chapter of that is actually quite good on on theology logical language and and analogical language and things like that um and of course this 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 whole thing kinds it finds its uh, clearest exposition in in thomas aquinas but but the well i don't know about clearest but certainly you know it's classic it's classic exposition in thomas aquinas uh, i'm not sure whether anyone should say that thomas aquinas is clear well not not in the sense that he's easy anyway getting myself a bit tied up there the point is is that um this kind of thing, when when you hear all human language about God is inadequate and to some degree metaphorical, God is not a father, blah, 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 blah. It makes it sound like the person who's speaking has actually studied these things and knows what they're talking about. But as somebody who has studied this, at least to some extent, I'm just saying everything I've heard from Charlie Bell in that one minute clip, and to be fair, it's only one minute, and everything I'm reading here that Justin Welby has said, and pretty much in this whole article, indicates to me that nobody is familiar with the tradition of reflection upon theological language about god and if they were they wouldn't be they wouldn't be talking in this kind of slapdash manner so well, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's like a pseudo it's like a pseudo theological pseudo intellectualism but I mean, I mean when it comes down to it like the church of england needs to maintain a the the, the, the calling of god father because christ called god father of course. you know no no other argument is needed i mean you're quite right um, but but yeah. sort of moving away from from addressing God in the way that that Christ addressed God as a sort of most, I mean you can address God in other ways obviously but um, but can, I but, mean well yeah but other ways not other ways that are um, contradictory to that no so no no not other ways that con- you shouldn't address God as mother because no. that contradicts the way He's revealed Himself to us as a father. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely but you know I was thinking more like there are other ways of talking about God in the Bible I think that's probably what Charlie was trying to get when he says people who think about thousands of ways you know. Um, is that what uh, he said? I think I thought he just made some allusion to oh, people have been thinking about this for thousands of years. I Does he think what the the gendered nature of God? I don't know about that. I think yeah, they haven't. They've been, they've been thinking about that for about five minutes. <laughs> they've been thinking about uh, they've thinking about God though, and ways of talking about God. I mean, arguably, you know, you get it all the way through the Bible. You know, Yahweh, I am, mm-hmm. uh, Elohim, uh, you know, and all of that sort of stuff. The the, the name of God in the temple. That's a, you know reflections on 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 god and how to address god and how to therefore how, how to um talk about god have been going ongoing but um uh but fundamentally our revelation is from christ isn't it and our father is, yeah, you don't, is the you don't primary way to, you don't need to say anything more about it than that but it's just the the reason i brought it up in this context is because of all this nonsense about you know people trying to make excuses about changing that language um to do with the fact that that language is metaphorical yeah, well, the language is metaphorical, so we can kind of switch it in and out with other metaphors like, you know, God being a mother and things like that. And it's important to say why that's not legitimate. And they'll also they'll also much about God having feminine, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sort of ways of addressing him in, in the gospel. That's not quite true. You know, there there are there are sort of um, there are some feminine uh, language, but they tend to be not analogous, but um, an an agileless. But uh, how do you say it? Uh, uh, well, so they're uh, not analogies, analogies, but they're but they're um they're they're often similes, like like a mother takes her well, under the wings. You know? Well, um, you know, the only thing I can think of in the Gospels is where Christ weeps over Jerusalem and says yeah. he would he would gather them up, the people in Jerusalem as a as a hen gathers her brood. Yeah, um, but that's quite clearly a simile. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a comparison using like or as. So, it's not saying that Jesus in any way is. Is a like if, I, if I said if I went out into my church, not that I'd ever do this, and said to my congregation, "Oh, how I long to gather you up as a hen gathers her chicks or whatever," they wouldn't say, "Oh, are you saying you're a woman?" They would just understand that. Well, or know, are you some... saying you're a chicken? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chick- <laughs> hens, hens are hens are female. Are you yeah. saying you're a, you're a hen or a female? It's, you're a, it's, you're it's, a female chicken. It's just I can't, but I honestly can't think of another one in the. I can't think of an, I can't think, I know, um, you know, there are, you know, so Psalm 131, you know, uh, talking about, and is that Psalm 131, the one about, you know, as a, as a child, um, you know, the thing where it compares, um, 
uh, psalmist relationship to God to a child. Like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child. Yeah. 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 Yeah, So there's stuff like that, but it's not implying, you know, you don't need to look, you you would never read that and say, well, that's implying that God is a woman. It's using a, it's using a um, a simile to compare the relationship between the psalmist. Weaned child with his mother. Yeah. Yeah to a baby's um you know it's not saying that god's got breasts or something like that um anyway so probably enough about language uh but but tom you did say oh you know the bishops are asleep at the wheel and i just thought we should give some credit where credit is due here because um just going back to the gay marriage thing for a minute um jill duff who's the bishop of lancaster has yep. written an article in premier christian christianity uh which is actually she actually does say some good stuff in it um can i do you mind if i just read some no, of these go ahead go ahead i mean there's a lot of things about storms coming and going etc um I, I don't seem to be subscribed so i can't get into it well, i'm not subscribed either so i don't know how I'm, how I'm on it anyway she writes while some will welcome these proposals so this is speaking about the proposals to bless gay relationships um and some will be disappointed they haven't gone far enough viz um gay marriage in churches many of us have quietly experienced deep sadness i have had a series of people come to see me in tears over the last two weeks one young vicar who leads a mainstream city centre church in Lancashire summed up many of my conversations, local and national. It's like I'm being chucked under a bus. We usually have pastoral guidance to undergo the practical outworking of the services we offer. As things stand, it is at the local level, on the doorstep, that a good proportion of our clergy would have to opt out to the prayers for God's blessing um, upon same-sex relationships. All our painstaking work, enabling welcome for young um, for LGBT people in our communities, is under threat. It becomes a personal rejection. Like me, many clergy are unable to use these prayers in good conscience. The pastoral guidance is unwritten. Here are two other implications of the draft prayers for God's blessing, uh, which remain obscured by the storm. Firstly, Anglican social media can mislead us into believing there's an inevitable direction of travel towards same-sex ma- marriage. Twitter algorithms are designed to amplify a progressive view. Um, recall the last general election, hashtag Labour win was trending for Twitter on Twitter. It was the worst defeat for Labour in a generation. Second, like a runaway tra- train under the pressure of um, press spotlight, it has been suggested we row back from those beautiful standards of the New Testament so that sex is no longer only for christian marriage no theological rationale will carefully weighed discernment um and that is a that is a um that's got to be taken as a reference to some things that have been said in public by for example the archbishop of york where he's um where he's essentially said that sex is is no longer only for christian marriage but for committed and faithful stable relationships yep um so I, I think that's all I'm, I'm going to read out because it, it's a good article and I'll leave I'll leave it. I mean, I don't agree with everything she says. And there's an irony here, Tom, because um, I'm, you know, like I, I don't talk about this all the time, but I don't um, I don't think it's right for women to be ordained to the priesthood and the episcopate. But there's an irony for me here where the best thing I've heard a bishop saying by far is um, a female bishop. And she's yeah. she's her, her reflection here. She's got a good reflection on women bishops and same sex marriage, which is very thoughtful, uh, which I say I won't go into all of that now. But. Um, you know, I credit to her uh, for standing up and saying, you know, what other bishops, uh, the kinds of things that other bishops uh, should be saying. Um, just, just shall I just read um, the next, this is the last bit. Yeah, go. go uh, the go. storm is a big one. Um, it threatens clergy on their doorsteps, not just conversations in the pub. It threatens the fragility of our LGBT same sex attracted Christians in their diversity of passionately held views. Uh, using both types of language there, LGBT and same-sex attractors. It threatens to tear further the fabric of the Anglican communion. Throughout Christian history, storms have come and gone. Some have fractured the church. Some have fired our faith. The Methodists were driven out and provided huge new missional energy. Courage is the biggest factor in church growth and flourishing internationally. May we have great courage in our day and keep our eyes on Jesus, the still centre of all our storms um i'm not sure i just say i i know she's being sort of rhetorical there but uh, courage is the biggest factor in church growth i'm not really sure that that's true but uh, courage is very very important but i think faithfulness is presumably got something presumably i mean uh, can... in order to have faithfulness we need courage don't we um, um well you could be very courageous but you could be completely unfaithful couldn't you so yeah but you couldn't be very faithful without courage mm, that's true yeah um 
You're frozen, Jamie. Have I frozen as well? No, you've not frozen. Just carry on. It's probably just a glitch in my internet. I've got a bit of internet problems at the moment. Probably right. Yep. All right. Uh, are we doing question of the rest then? Yes, we should. We should. And I will get it up in a minute. Hopefully my video will I really, really enjoyed having the string quartet. On, oh, yeah. Uh, house music. They're brilliant. Yeah. Vaughan, Vaughan as well. It's great. Yeah. Really, really good. Uh, right. Yeah. Let's do a bit of question the rev. Here we go. It's about to start. Yeah, they played this live, didn't they? It's really Great. good. Yeah. Okay, Tom. It's time once again for a bit of question the rev. And today we are taking quick fire questions from our Telegram group, which you can join if you like to, t.me forward slash reverend, or you can find it on our website, reverendpod.com. Dot com. Now, um, I did find a good one here a while ago. Now, a lot of people, I think, misunderstand what we mean by quick fire. We mean um, short, punchy questions, which we can answer in, you know, a couple of seconds. But, um, you know, never mind. Uh, yeah, how about this one? What do you think of pet services? Uh, also, after doing a very successful one-off homeschool day this week, we started Genesis 1, and I was asked where dinosaurs fit in. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, as an interesting note, we concluded because God made livestock as well as wild animals, he obviously intended for us to eat meat. Interesting. So yeah. anything you want to address there? Um, so first thought, where, where are we first? Um, pet services, don't tend to do much about them. I mean, I, I, it's, not, it's not my thing. Yeah, uh, that is, uh, okay. I don't know. Would you, would you do a pet service? Um, not quite sure I what you're do doing. A blessing a of a, I did bless a dog recently. I blessed a dog at a, I think it was a confirmation. They asked, no, it wasn't a confirmation. It was a baptism. They asked me to bless their dog at the same time as they're being baptized. And I did, I did flick it with some holy water. Yeah. Then what does that even mean? Um, okay. Um, For a dog to be blessed. Yeah. Well, just, you know, receive God's blessing. Okay. Um, what does it mean for anything to be blessed? Well, I don't really know. Uh, um, <laughs> and the lack of a, the lack of a, the lack of a sort of, um, a thought out theology of blessing is one of the massive issues with the the, the bishop's proposals actually because there's no what does it actually mean um uh the but well, it means that i mean there is plenty of theological reflection upon blessings they've just yeah. chosen to ignore it and make yeah. up their own their own convenient uh definition <laughs> yeah um so genesis one where do the dinosaurs fit in uh well there's i don't think there's really any doubt that the dinosaurs can fit in there and i can't see why they couldn't be with all creation you know all the animals adam names them uh well the uh, issue the issue is uh, tom come on you you're being a bit come on you're what? you're skirting you're skating around the issue there aren't you come on the what? issue is that uh that according to the kind of uh you know old age you know darwinistic uh modern view this that that dinosaurs existed millions of years before human beings yeah i mean i mean and not and not at the same time so are you saying they did exist at the same time as human beings Oh, is, is there any reason they couldn't? I don't know. Well, it's just because that's what the science the science is telling us, apparently. It is. It is. Uh, I, I don't really know. I'm not a young Earth creationist, uh, I guess. Um, I don't, but I'm a creationist. I believe that God... I mean, the thing is that God could make the world look like that anyway, couldn't he? I mean, we couldn't. We don't know that the world wasn't made last Tuesday. Um, there's actually nothing we could do to, to prove otherwise. Um, uh, but, um, you know, we, we could be being created in the moment with our, you know, memories of last Tuesday uh intact um I, I guess there's there's space there for for god to have made all the animals before they made mankind and for some of the animals to have died out if you want to sort of try and sort of overlay a ev evolution mm -hmm. uh, verse 24 25 the animals are made it doesn't say that all the fish in the sea that were ever made are there when adam is made yep yep um okay all right Good. Well, right. there's a there's a problem with 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 the, with the sort of evolution anyway because, well, I mean, I, I, this is one of the things we discussed in. It's not very good quick fire, is it? Uh, discussed in uh, my um, Genesis three uh, sort of book group uh, today, which is that if you know if you are going to deny the sort of historical reality of Genesis three, then you have a real problem with uh, with with God effectively having created humankind flawed. Right, so 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 finitude mm. and evil coincide, and right. God's made something. You know, God is, must be in some way responsible for creating a, a being that uh, human humankind that that, that are not um, capable of living to the law, which would be a monstrous thing to do. Um, 
I guess. Whereas, you know, and not least because like Paul quite clearly reads Genesis 3, literally, as in Adam all have died. So in Adam, so in so the new Adam, so in Christ all, all are, are made alive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So so you kind of, you, you, I think, I actually think that there's, there's, it's not quite so simple as saying, oh yeah, well, we can just square the evolution and the Bible and we can make it all happy and rounded because it doesn't actually quite work as simply as that. Yeah. Um, well, to... yeah, well, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, yeah. And I do apologize for viewers because my video has, bro- has frozen. Um, my office internet has um, broken for some reason. So I'm using my house internet, which is why that's happened. So you just got a still on my face and I'm looking quite aggressive, but hopefully it will all work out. Um, yeah, I don't know, Tom, what I think. I know I know what will happen now is that I'll get angry emails from uh, ever, uh, from young earth creationists writing in to tell me that I should be we should both be more robust on this issue. Uh, all I can say is that I'm just very, should. I'm just very, I'm very open-minded about it. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm my sort of view of uh, the sort of scientific orthodoxy has clearly been shattered over the last few years. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if, you know, I've been massively misled, misled over this issue as well. And I do agree with you that um, you do need a real historical Adam and Eve um in order to for for the words of paul and indeed the words of christ to make any sense and the whole the whole storyline of scripture to make sense so you know i'm more inclined um i'm more inclined to believe um well I, I'm, I'm completely inclined to believe in a real adam and eve um and but if you believe if but then we've immediately now just ruled out like evolution as, as a plausible sort of oh well maybe you know we can't really hold that and then say oh well you know evolution might be the way that god did it you know it becomes really tricky um well well yeah i mean someone like not that i'm advocating this but someone like i've heard someone like anti Wright talk about the way that you know god called a sort of primal pair out of the you know highly developed hominids or whatever and i do i do think there is a i do think you know we do have to read those those chapters in genesis um as the kind of literature that they're intended to be which again is not to say that they're not true it's just to say that you know we should read them as literature and not you know as a sort of um as a sort of you would write as though they're a kind of modern scientific textbook so i think genesis one you know i don't think that's trying to tell us that that's seven literal days um no no and i'm not saying that because of the science i'm saying it because um it just doesn't appear to me to be that kind of literature and people have said this throughout this is a point i made in the um first things piece uh, you know, people have said this throughout Christian history. St. Augustine said this about about the seven days. Um, so you've got to take it in its context. And again, I, I take the Adam and Eve story literally, um, like it's literal truth, but it could be written in a kind of mythopoetic uh, genre, which is not yeah. saying it's not true. It is true, but it could be. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a finely crafted uh, narrative, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's got a good uh you know uh, reflective structure and all that sort of stuff it's, it's clearly yeah 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 absolutely um tom i've just flicked through we should probably move on so sorry we haven't really given a proper answer to that question <laughs> uh, i'll probably become more hardcore about it as i think about it more um we've got oh yeah this one's we're going through philippians in our women's bible study group do you think the joy can only ever be found in the lord and that unbelievers cannot experience it happiness yes but not joy hmm, interesting um uh, i think no I, i'm gonna go with no on that one but i don't know what you're gonna say tom what is there a different can we can we i think probably depends on how you define these things isn't it yeah i was gonna say the same thing it's all about definitions i mean joy is uh depends what you mean by the word joy isn't it uh, if, if you're you gonna define that, joy as 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 the feeling of happiness you get when you align your life with the will of god then then the answer is yes if you're gonna go for a slightly broader concept of joy then the answer is no isn't it um, yeah like joy is a kind of like and i think i know what she means like happiness is a kind of frothy kind of passing thing but joy being a sort of deep rooted um happiness but i think people who are not believers can experience that because um you know god because of common grace uh you know god sends his reign on the just and the unjust his his son on the yeah. righteous and the unrighteous you know he blesses people who are not christians as well as christians um, um so yeah guy asks a question about the lord's prayer says why do i leave out the doxology answer is guy really? yeah it does that? Yeah. you just made that up i didn't say yeah, that no, it says yeah. guy it says you're underneath oh yeah yeah generally. okay yeah, i've seen it i've seen uh, it i thought we, we sort of addressed it before but um the the uh the, the reason i do is because cramner often left it out um approximately half of the time in fact he very carefully half the time left it out and half the time didn't the reason being that he was aware that the textual veracity of the doxology is uh is not 
uh, is not strong. It's only in later manuscripts. Uh, so early manuscripts unanimously do not have a doxology. Tom, I don't think that's the reason. That, that is where true. You, that's actually where have you read that? It's, it's literally true. My copy of the up. RSV. It's no, literally made up. It's not. All it's late literally stuff. made up. No, so the footnote in all the Bibles I've got <laughs> it's is... Literally a fa- it doesn't say Cranmer thought this, though, did it? I mean, that's, oh, a, no. that's a modern thing of coming out with. Well, why, why, Cranmer, 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 why else would he half the time have, have the doxology, half the time not? Uh, well, because... I can tell you, I tell you the answer to that, is Go because on. in one gospel account of the Lord's Prayer, it's there, and in the other one, it's not. That's not that doesn't make sense because he doesn't use the Lucan version and then the Matthean version, which is slightly different. Um, no, he just uses a modern English translation of both, and in one he's got the doxology, and one he hasn't. So, so, so Matthew, uh, uh, the Gospel of Matthew is where the doxology comes from, and only later tr- uh, manuscripts have the uh, "For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory." All unanimously, it's early not, manuscripts. It was not. It was not the. It was not the trans. I don't. I, I find it highly unlikely. I have gone to. I haven't looked into this, but I, I find it highly unlikely that was the reason that Cranmer. Did that right, as far as that's what i was told i mean it, it, i don't think that could was, possibly be true uh, i mean apart from anything else the, the kjv uh would have had it would have had it in wouldn't it which the was, kjv does have it in although it has a footnote these days in modern editions. yeah so in so. but in 1611 when it was published nobody but he, he didn't use nobody, the kjv did he? I mean, well it hadn't been translated by the exactly so he, he used the latin he, he used he latin manuscripts would he and use latin did, manuscripts or did latin, he use latin and greek manuscripts, manuscripts. Uh, but the, the the latest Greek manuscripts do not do, will we'll have it as a footnote, but do not. Yeah, but you're to. talking about manuscripts which have been discovered recently in the past hundred. I, years. I, th- I think there was textual. There was a question about the text even then. Mm, well, I'm not sure that's plausible. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a question about the text now. Like, if we're going to be serious about about the scripture, then we need to be serious about textual criticism of yeah, that we sort. Need be, we need to be serious about the way the church has received the scripture, so not about how unbelieving uh, scholars of 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 the Bible have. I, I, st- I still think it's, it's have, it's, have it's, dissected it's, it's, and treated un- it. Like it's a, unarguable. Like a dead body they're not there dissected. An it. autopsy on. There's, it's not. They've not dissected. It. It's unarguable that the earliest manuscripts of Matthew, i.e. The, the the ones closest to the to the original manuscript unanimously do not have a doxology in them, and it is only later ones where that appears and and and, and copies that are derived from later ones. Therefore, the uh, therefore the, the if it, if it was the early ones sometimes had it and sometimes didn't, you might you know you might not be able to have such a firm conclusion. Although there's still uh, you know as to which way round it was. Is it some manuscript subscribe has left it out and some manuscript subscribe has, has hasn't, or is you know whereas because it's all one way round, we can be certain. The early manuscript, the, the, in the original manuscript. We can't be certain. Don't be ridiculous. Well, so you're suggesting that some scribes oh, left Tom, it out, look, and then later on, on you some scribes cert- back in again. You can't be certain because you could discover. Oh right, you're being. So, it's just sophistry now, Jamie. No, it's not it's, sophistry. It's, it's How is it sophistry? It's, 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 you were saying we can be certain. We can be absolutely certain. But people would have said that before. They would have said we can be certain because we've got these manuscripts. Oh, we just we've discovered some earlier manuscripts, and now we've realised that uh, they say something different. Or you could. If it was, if if there were earlier manuscripts, the contemporary manuscripts. If there were earlier manuscripts which had the doctology and original manuscripts that you know the original manuscript that matthew wrote then then you would find earlier some 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 with the doxology otherwise you, you, oh, you're, well, you your find, hypothesis has I, to I be i bet you i bet you a million pounds a million billion zillion pounds if you found the, the actual manuscript that Man- matthew wrote it would have the doxology in it and I it. and i also bet you a zillion pounds that if you could go back in a time machine and literally stand there while christ was teaching the lord's prayer in aramaic he would include the doxology jamie i i don't think that's the case you want to make and- that back? Come on! I mean, I, no, I'm not going to make a, a bet. Billion pounds. It's it's a it's, billion it's, pounds. Pointless. A billion pounds. You know, it's pointless. It's it's <laughs> you, you you you're you're, you're basically. Um, are, are you it's denying brilliant. that? Are you denying that, that that some there are some mistakes in copies of manuscripts? No. So 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 you know how would you tell there's a mistake? And this is the pointless. This is wasting time for everyone else. But <laughs> but uh, but the, the reason you, the way you can tell a mistake is if you have earlier manuscripts and later mm-hmm. manuscripts and the later manuscripts all have the mistakes. You know that they've copied off of one. This is how you tell. Yeah, the, I'd have to the, look into this. Um, I'd have to look. look honestly, I don't know about this particular issue of textual well, uh, criticism. But what I am saying is that I think it's unlikely that this was the reason that Cranmer did this. I think he did it because it's a okay, reflection well, of the variation in scripture. 
in the scripture which the church accepted and believed in for 1900 years before a bunch of unbelieving biblical critics came along with their scissors and their marker pens and decided to start chopping up scripture and uh, blanking bits of it out because they thought they dis- discovered more reliable manuscripts it's just another satanic ploy tom to undermine I, the word of god i, di- I disagree with you jamie in this it case is. come on no we've got to, we've got to be we've got to, we've got to sort of seek uh, uh, as closely as we can for the, um to the um uh to the uh to the original manuscripts and and frankly that includes not being a bit naive about this that sometimes there are mistakes sometimes there are glosses that are included as uh as the text by another by another scribe sometimes uh you know grammar changes you know this does happen all right okay i think we'll leave it there i'll give you the last word then uh except say that you're no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> you have the last one. That's fine. Uh, there was one other that I wanted to um, talk about. Oh, there was a question about sin. It's probably too much, isn't it? I need to go, really. It's half past four. Uh, yeah, Tom, I think we have to leave it there. All right. I mean, honestly, to be honest, so we've got some good questions there, but really lots of them are not really appropriate for question the rev. So thanks for writing in. But, you know, do try and stick to the brief next time. Um, a number of people asking about where to find churches to go to. Um, it's better just to send us an email about that kind of thing. And we're also working on getting some kind of affiliate, uh, a reverend affiliate scheme sorted out so we can have um, churches represented on our website, you know, uh, irreverend friendly churches. So that will that will come about soon. So hopefully that will that will be in the pipeline. So but that was that was good. That was good, Tom. Um, do you want to say a prayer for us as we? Of course. So Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who've listened to. Uh, this episode we pray for all those we've touched we pray for charlie bell we pray for all those who are seeking truth we pray those for those in synod um and especially we pray that your will be done and that the church's orthodox doctrine will be preserved we pray for madonna and for those who are unsatisfied with how they look pray for them to be uh, held in your grace we ask this in the name of jesus christ amen Oh, man. I was thinking next week we should get Daniel on because Daniel is unwell. He's he's just lying in bed watching General Synod. So we should get him on so that he can give me, us an update of what's been going on, which would be fascinating. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So just to say to everyone that our um, all our stuff is on our website, revenpod.com, and you can find ways to support us there on Patreon and buy me a coffee. We re- really do appreciate everyone's support that you can give to us. Um, so please do consider supporting us uh, by going on the website. If you like this podcast, we would really appreciate that i'll definitely have my internet sorted out next week so viewers will not be treated to a still of my face looking quite aggressive for half of the episode so apologies for that as well uh but yeah that's it tom you got anything else to say that's it thank you okay right thank you very much tom thank you everyone and bye-bye god bless you